Welcome to my walkthrough for assignment four. The purpose of this assignment is to deepen your experience using Java's functional programming features and their integration with Java's Reactive Streams API. In particular, in this assignment, you'll develop an app that uses the Rx Java implementation of Reactive Streams to obtain, transform, and store images. Like the earlier assignments, the code you write here will have a GUI and will run as an Android app. Please use this GUI along with the supplied unit test discussed below to help test and debug your solution. The following resources may be helpful in completing this assignment. A detailed overview of Java Reactive Streams and a comparison with Java Streams is available here, and a discussion of Rx Java coding examples is available here. A tutorial overview of Rx Java appears here. I recommend the book Reactive Programming with Rx Java to learn more about Rx Java support for Java's Reactive Streams API. Naturally, we'll cover all this material in class, which will be available in my YouTube CS253 playlist here. The image crawler app is packaged as a project using the latest version of Android Studio. As is always the case, the app's written in Kotlin and Java and demonstrates lots of Android features. However, for assignment four, you just have to be aware of several directories. The image crawler's crawler directory, which contains the skeletons you need to fill in, as we'll give an overview shortly. App source test, which is the set of unit tests that exercise the features that we're implementing for this assignment and can be used to evaluate whether you've correctly satisfied the assignment's requirements. And last but not least, the app source Android test Java assignment test directory, which is an Android Studio instrumentation test that runs your app automatically. As you've done in previous assignments, you need to use the provided Android Studio project. And you can run this project by clicking the green run app button in the Android Studio IDE, and that will prompt you for an Android emulator to run. As always, you have to pick one that's either API 29 or later. And if you haven't created one already, something's gone horribly wrong, but if you need one, click that button and that'll go ahead and make one for you. In this part of the assignment, you'll need to complete an implementation of an image crawler class in the Rx observable crawler file that obtains, transforms, and stores images. This class uses the Rx Java framework to perform an image crawl asynchronously, starting from a root URI. Depending on the parameters used to run the test, images from HTML pages reachable from the root URI are either downloaded from a remote web server or are read from the local file system. In either case, the results are stored in files. The bulk of the code for the app is provided in the supplied skeletons. In fact, a complete solution using Java 7 features is provided in the sequential loops crawler.java file. You should therefore focus on converting this Java 7 based class to the Rx observable crawler class that uses the Rx Java framework. As has been the case in the last several assignments, your solution should use no loops and no unnecessary conditional statements at all. And instead, you should use Rx Java's classes and methods. Skeleton code for this assignment is available here in my GitHub account. Now that you've set up your GitLab account, you can pull the skeleton code into your repository, read it carefully, and complete the to-do markers. The unit tests in the image crawler source test folder are provided to increase our and your confidence that your implementation is working as we expect. As usual, of course, testing only demonstrates the presence of bugs, but never their absence. So don't rely solely on the unit test to detect problems in your code. Moreover, you'll notice that we keep improving the unit tests. So things that may have worked previously in earlier assignments will break when run with the unit, new unit tests. So make sure you fix any problems that are shown by the unit test before you submit your code for review and final grading. Assignment four is more complicated than the previous assignments. In particular, the asynchronous nature of Rx Java and reactive streams may take some time to get accustomed to. So please start the assignment soon and ask questions in class, office hours, and on the discussion forum. As usual, the app, image crawler, skeletons, and unit tests are extensive, though you don't need to understand them all to complete your solution successfully. Now that we've walked through the specification for assignment four, it's time to take a look at the skeletons. We'll focus on the skeleton file rxobservablecrawler.java. This file contains a class that uses rxjava observables to perform a concurrent image crawl starting from a root URI. Images from HTML pages reachable from the root URI are downloaded from a remote web server or from the local file system, transformed, and then ultimately stored in files that can be displayed to the user. Let's start by taking a look at the perform crawl method. The purpose of this method is to recursively crawl a given page and return the total number of processed images. As you can see, it takes a page URI and a depth. And what it does internally is it calls 
the crawl page async helper method, which we'll look at in a moment, which will perform the crawl asynchronously. It'll then go ahead and obtain a count of the number of images that were downloaded and processed, waiting until all of the processing is done, and return the result as an int value. If any error or exception is encountered, the value zero is returned. And here's the portion that you have to fill in. You have to replace return zero with the following steps, which I've outlined here. These should help you figure out what methods to call in RxJava. The next method we'll look at is called crawl page async, which recursively crawls the web page identified by the page URI and then download and transform all the discovered images. The recursion ends when the past depth is exceeded. So depth is one of the parameters. As you can see, the implementation of the crawl page async method returns an observable stream of images from this page, the page URI, and all page links recursively reachable from it. It'll return an empty observable if the depth limit of the web crawling is reached or if the page URI has already been visited. This method should use observable methods like just, filter, map, and flat map. And this latter method should call the images on page async and page links helper method, which we'll see when we take a little bit look down below. Then here's the return null. You have to obviously have to replace null with the actual code. And this kind of outlines again the code to, to use here. The next method is the images on page async and page links method. And you can see that this returns all images on the page and its linked pages. And it's taken, takes a page as a parameter and a depth parameter. And what you'll do here is you'll return an observable stream consisting of all images on this page and any images linked on it. And this method should call images on page async links and images on page async. And it's going to use the observable method merge with and the observable method subscribe on to merge all the images into a single observable stream via the underlying IO scheduler, which will run the computations in a pool that can expand, a thread pool that can expand automatically. So you fill that in down there. Here's the images on page async links method, method. And you can see that this method finds all the page links on the past page and will crawl each page to download and transform all the discovered images. And again, it takes a page and a depth and the implementation should create and return an observable stream consisting of images that have been downloaded and transformed. This method should call, this method, the images on page async links method should call crawl page async recursively. That was defined earlier. And also use observable methods like from iterable, flat map, and subscribe on to perform all the processing concurrently in the IO scheduler. And again, you replace return null with your solution and this kind of outlines the methods you should call. Then we have the images on page async method, which finds, downloads, and transforms all images on the given page, which is passed as a parameter. And this is a rather complicated method, it learns long method, and it, it, what it does is it creates and returns an observable stream for this page. And this method internally, the images on page async method, should implement the RxJava flat map concurrency idiom. Needless to say, we will spend time in class talking about the RxJava flat map concurrency idiom. And it should call methods get page elements as URLs, get or download image, and transform image async, as well as use observable methods like just, flat map, map, filter, and subscribe on. And these methods are used to perform the processing in the IO scheduler thread pool. The flat map, map, and filter methods can be called more than once. And if you look at the detailed breakdown, you'll see how that occurs. In addition, various Java 8 optional methods, such as of nullable, is present, and get, can and probably should be used to avoid dealing with null values, kind of cleans things up a bit. So once again, you replace the return null with the actual code. As you can see, there's a number of steps here, and this kind of outlines what those steps should be. And then this method here, which I think is the final method, is transform image async. It's going to apply the current set of crawler transforms on the image passed as a parameter, 
and it will return an observable stream of all successfully transformed images. And as you can see, the implementation of transform image async will return an observable stream of transformed images. And this method should call the create new cache item and apply transform methods, as well as use a bunch of RxJava observable methods like from iterable filter and map. And it turns out that filter and map can and probably should be called more than once. In addition, Java 8 optional methods, such as of nullable, is present, and get can and probably should be used to avoid dealing with null values. So again, you return null and replace return null, of course, with the code that applies the basic steps that are outlined here. Now, as you can see, this, this is actually a, a bit more tricky than the parallel streams and completable futures implementation. And one of the reasons why it's a bit more tricky is that there's just many more interesting operations that are part of RxJava. And in fact, you can think about parallel streams and completable futures as kind of providing different pieces of what RxJava merges together within the common reactive streams API. So it'll take a little longer probably to get this all right. And that's why you see more comments in here to kind of help walk you through the different steps. As always, the unit tests can be great help in helping to pinpoint what you're doing and what may be going wrong. Now that we've walked through the specification and the skeletons, it's time to go ahead and run the unit tests. As usual, we go ahead and find the tests that are in the image crawler source test folder. And we go ahead and execute those tests. And that will go ahead and start everything running. First, it'll build everything. It takes a little while to build it, and it takes a while to run. As you can see, we now have a very large number of tests. I think we have something in the order of about 150 tests. And these tests keep getting better and better every time we put a new project out. So keep an eye out for things that may have passed previously but are no longer working. Obviously, they should all work. And you can see that it'll run the completable future crawler tests, the parallel streams crawler tests for both parallel streams crawler one and two. And then most recently, the Rx observable crawler tests, which are the ones for this assignment. And those tests should be pretty good at giving you some tips on how to do the implementation in the most efficient way. So keep an eye out and make sure you ask questions if you have any problems. And then there's also lots of unit tests that go back and rerun other things that we've done in the past, quite extensive as you can see. And again, we keep improving those uh, older tests. So don't be surprised if some things that didn't complain in previous submissions complain now and please go ahead and fix them, otherwise you'll lose a fairly substantial amount of points because the whole point of this is to keep improving your assignments with every new turn of the crank. So that wraps up the summary of this particular assignment. As I mentioned before, it's a bit more complicated than the previous ones, so please start early and make sure you ask questions if you have any problems at all.